Meccano. I put together this rough framework to start with to work out how the um, coaxial drive is going to function. So we've got one large and two small gears. The original you'll remember had three large but I'll go into that later. If I turn the crank you'll see that the shaft is turning in opposite directions. This is a tube attached to this gear and then from there is a rod on which this gear is fixed and the rod runs inside the tube so the rod inside the tube can move in the opposite direction to the tube. So the coaxial arrangement is it. I've put a little spring here in the temporary lash up just to put enough tension on this so that it works without me having to adjust it too finely. I don't think we'll need the springs in the final version. So there we are. That's how that part works and there isn't really very much more to it in terms of mechanics. So having established that, the problem I've got is that I'm using temporary aluminium tube here that I happen to have that's not quite the right size and I need to um, also get something instead of this wire that I'm using as the internal rod. So I don't have the right materials yet but I'm working on it. If you remember as a shutter, so the original gears like that and although they appear to be on the same shaft they're not this one is fixed to that tube and this one is fixed to a rod that goes through that tube and the tube finishes there so as this one turns from the crank it's able to turn those two other gears in the opposite directions. So, those of you who know all about coaxial drives won't be surprised at any of this. I now have this tube, steel tube, rather than the aluminium I was using to get started. This is the final thing. I'm told I can cut it with a hacksaw, which I hope is the case. And it's the same, almost exactly the same outside diameter as Meccano rod. And the internal diameter is one eighth of an inch. So I'm now waiting for some one eighth of an inch mild steel bar that I've ordered. So that we'll have the internal rod and the external tube to run together. I'm starting to put together what I think will be the final carcass or framework of the actual mechanism and the machine starting to come together um, but I'm very much making it up as I go along so no doubt there will be lots of changes along the way as well as of course further additional bits but um, the lamp has to be fairly high up here because the part of the disc that we're showing is up there and I've arranged that the lamp house can be moved back to a suitable position. The lighting unit will be one of these. There's an LED chip in there, heat sink, cooling fan and a condenser which was either, I can't remember, 60 or 90 degrees and um, the question will be, do we need a supplementary condenser? In the replica Zipraxis scope that I got going, I used one of these, but with the condenser that was already in the Zipraxis scope. Depends on the spread, depends on whether we need a condenser that's going to channel the light better. It's 
gets a bit complicated and the easiest way to find out what's best is to try it. I do have a suitable condenser if we need to have that fitted it might be overkill sorry it'll be there with the lamp behind we might be overkill it's early days yet we'll see then we have to think about the lens of course projection lens And that's definitely giving a wider spread than is necessary. I have to check that's a 60 degree, not a 90 degree. If it's a 90 degree, you could get a 60 degree condenser in that unit, which will reduce that circle just about the right amount. Otherwise, this has got to be closer to the disc, or we have to have a supplementary condenser. That's now much closer. Might not be too bad. We don't want the edges of the light anyway to just drop off, so we might actually do the trick. So if I put the other condenser in, it certainly reduces the light spread. Although there is actually the texture of the small LED elements visible there, I don't know if that would be a problem. So if we go with this condenser and the mechanism up very close to the lamp house, there's going to have to be a way we move either the lamp house or the mechanism away from each other so that we can change the discs. On the original I think the mechanism can slide out, which is kind of interesting because that's what we could do, or this has to slide back. Probably sliding out mechanism would be best go with the original design. Now this unit is 100 watt and when we tested it in one of the old replica Supraxiscopes we got a main triple. Um, I've got some more of them but they're all marked up with the same number IP67 so uh, another one there. So it's a bit odd because we've got an IP65, one of these, a 50 watt, in the um, light unit that I'm using for the old Supraxis Goat replicas, and it doesn't give a main ripple. These seem to be almost certainly the same manufacturer, but they're the 100 watt. And certainly the one I've been using does give a main ripple, so we could try another one or try that with a 50 watt LED panel, which I have. I think we'll probably use the 50 watt. Future experimentation, we can put one of these on 100 and see what, what that does. We don't want to main ripple. I'm hoping that when we wire this up, with the chip um, because they appear to be exactly the same as the one I'm using with no problems but we'll also have no problems and we won't suddenly get a main ripple with a 50 watt unit it uh, remains to be seen I sometimes wonder is this sort of thing that makes me think maybe that's why my bridge much prefer to use limelight rather than the electric that his machine is also capable of being illuminated by <laughs> 